and welcome back to another episode of the Chaosium House RuneQuest campaign, The Adventures of the White Bull. I'm Jeff Richard, and I'll be your GM tonight. I'm joined with by uh, Neil Robinson, Linda Borgen, Richard August, Philip Glass, and of course, Claudia Loroff. Uh, if you all remember, uh, last session, we, we stopped things off where you all had had a uh, your introductions and preliminary gift giving to Prince Keller Starbrow. Uh, if I think we would all agree that that went just swimmingly well, yeah, swimmingly perfect. well. Uh, and today is the High Holy Day of Orlanth. So um, rather than, unless people have any really specific things that they want to do in this, um, you're in, you know, you're, you're there near the Flame of Sartar, which is the center of the Orlanth Rex rites. Um, I'm just going to let people roll against their worship skill, uh, including even you, uh, Gina, and you, Garen. Because, you know, there is so much cold activity going on on Orlance High Holy Day. Nisk and Colbrast, if you guys are successful, you get all your rune points back. So I'm going to keep my spell going. Okay, um, so you won't get those back. I won't get those back. Um, but I think I'm going to sacrifice for another point so I can have one other point going on. And when I sacrifice that, I can learn another spell. Yes, and you can. All I'd because... like to learn is lightning. Because that then completes, I then have the four weapons of Orlanth. Then you have the four weapons of Orlanth. Awesome. That, that means, so you've got the Earth Shield, the Lightning Spear, this sh the Scarf of Mist, and the Shadows, the uh, Sandals of Darkness. That's right? correct. And each one awesome. of those is a rune spell of a certain ability. Uh, and Colbrast, are you going to sacrifice any rune points or not? This is like the easiest time to do that. Um, I can come in. Oh, sorry, sacrifice any points of power. Power points? Well, the pro the thing is, uh, um, I only have uh, 11. It may not 12, be the best 12, idea. 12, 12 of those. We should also get a power gain roll, right? At the After end. it. And, uh, yes, and, and quite a lot of spells are against power uh, times five, I think. So yes. It's getting to a point where we'd have to, you know, roll like 50%. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, yep. was there a power, power roll at the end of this entire shenanigan for two weeks or after tonight? What we will do is we're going to do the High Holy Day. We will make um, skill and experience checks. We'll do any social gathering that you guys want to do um, and have all that wrapped up before the sacred, sacred time. Seat. yeah, okay. Sa mm -hmm. And sacred time, it, we will, sacred time is, that's when, that's, that's show time for you guys. So you yep. guys got 16 days before that, which is plenty of time. So let's start with, um, is there anything specific beyond, uh, beyond this sacrificing another point of power? Uh, that people are going to try to do on Orlan's High Holy Day. I cannot get any room points back on that day. Claudia, I'm going to let everybody because this is uh, this is the biggest set of ceremonies going on in the city, and every cult is doing something on this. This is you know this is Orlan's town. This is just like in uh, in Nochet where on Ernaldo's High Holy Day, everybody's doing something. Okay. All right? Unless, 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 Gina, unless, Gina, you want to talk me out of it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm willing to be talked out of it. No. Okay, I'm going to let, why don't everybody roll against their, their uh, worship skill? And you get a big bonus this time, Philip, a huge bonus. Yes, um, there which are, is, which is good. <laughs> your bonus is, um, and that, that, that is a good reminder, is um, definitely for the Orlanth cultists, you guys get, if you sacrifice nothing, you still get um, Jesus plus 70%. Uh, to your your chance. If you want to offer more, uh, a 
a medium sacrifice would get you another plus 10. Uh, if you sacrificed, if you bought a sheep or a pig, that would get you another 10. Or if you want to go all the way and buy a cow uh, or, or make some other major uh, sacrifice of booty, those are 20% each. So you could theoretically get yourself a plus 110% bonus. Sounds good. Your... I'll sacrifice two cows. Okay, that's 40. Okay, that's um, that will add plus 30 to your plus seven. So that's like adding a hundred percent bonus to you. Okay. So you'll probably succeed. Odds are good. Yeah. How about you, Ness? Are you going to make any sort of uh, additional sacrifice? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think I'll sacrifice the equivalent of a cow and some of the weapons that we have. For the rest of you guys, um, you don't get any sort of bonus like that, except if you want to offer uh, a living sacrifice or or sacrifice some of your war booty or whatnot to your gods. But this is not the high holy day of your deities. This is not the most sacred places of your deities. I just did that at the high holiday for Storm Bowl. So I'm doing a regular just worship and I fail mine. So Okay, well. But you got your spells back earlier, right? I believe you're already still yeah, maxed, I got maxed it out your points. Yeah, it's not a problem like that. Yeah. Okay, I'm still so high, running high on my. How, how much uh, is two cows? I mean, how much should I pay for them? 40 liners. And That's a then, lot of money. Yeah, depleting my funds slightly. Um, I hope the question, slightly. <laughs> slightly. The other question is, we still have these figurines standing around, I believe, in the Orlanth Temple in New Pavis. Yep. And they Did give you, you back a point of power even if you don't roll or fail or whatever. Correct. Oh, okay. Okay, that's not for now. That is for now. For now. Oh, okay. You don't, but you, you don't get a bonus one back. And the nice thing on High Holy Day, I believe, is you can get, if you succeed, you get all of them back anyway. Yes, the room point. It's more important for the other days, or if you're adventuring and you can't worship at all, and yeah. you can still get some back. Does that make sense? Okay. So you've got a minimum cold breast of getting one room point back because of that. Okay. A minimum. So I roll, I roll my worship. Roll your worship. Uh, so that's, yeah, 34 from 125. So, yeah, no problem. So, yeah. Okay, you get all your room points back. Cool. You get to, yay. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm still yeah. wondering if, I mean, one more room point would, would be nice because they wouldn't always be depleted after uh, using the Thunderbolt, um, Thunderbolt um, Yep. Spell. And you will get, I mean, you do get a POW gain roll every year. And you get a 50% chance of going up. So it should go up. It, it could even go up. Yeah, I mean, it didn't work last year, so the chances this year are much better. Do you, <laughs> do you need to get some spells that you cast, like Demoralize? Because yeah. if you do that, you can get a skill check, and so every season, you can get a chance to get your power up. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. And of course, you could learn that spell from your temple. You just have to pay for it. You may have one. Do you have Demoralize or anything, or Disrupt? Um, no, I don't think so. I have... No. Befuddle? Or Befuddle? Nope. No. Okay. Uh, we, we should have a week here, Cold Breast, where I could teach it to you for free. And we have some well, things we should, we should learn. Uh, yeah. you know, after, after the whole thing is over, we should make some have some holidays in Bold Home, if yeah. they still will have us here <laughs> after that. Oh and, yeah, and we're not going to be that popular here. This happens. Nisk might become prince of bold home if oh, we're not. not. <laughs> He's not at all. The moral lies would cost a hundred and fifty liners to learn. But it takes a week, right? Yes. And, and we don't have that time. At the you end. have sixteen days. Oh. And, until the. Until sacred time. Mm -hmm. Until sacred time. We rushed here to like here for this day. And so we so, can get more information. So we did. That actually sounds like a good idea. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, I want Garen to roll for his worship. Uh, will do. 
That is 17 against 60. Very good. Well, that would get you back. Um, that would get you back 1d6 minus 1. Ooh, lovely. Well, 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 well. That's good. That is four. So I get all my rune points back. And finally, Nisk. Oh, I rolled already. I succeeded with a 90. <laughs> but well, I get all of them back <laughs> anyway, and I was only down one that I could get back because the rest is carried on the spell. Uh, but my actually, my actually, but my skill, you know, my skill is over two hundred percent right now, thanks to the bonuses. Right, so it, it's a big the, the the high holy festival for Orland is you know this is a a a big day um, feasts. Uh, loads of people eating eating steak thanks to Colbrast. You know, two cows worth of of, of steak offered here. Uh, lots of happy Orlanth initiates. Yay, Colbrast! Hurrah for that wolf pirate! Yay, he brings steak. Um, you know, and there's dancing and there's singing and and uh, there's public intoxication and all the sort of great things that you would associate from the uh, the high holy day of a war storm uh, type god. So, you know, there's, there's dances where people do, where the initiates do war dances and, and sword dances and whatnot. And there's other bits where they, because it's also a holy day for Arnalda, the Arnaldans, you know, go in and they, they do their dances and, and there's not a lot of preaching that goes on to this, mainly sacrifices, dance and songs and drinking and intoxication. So uh, lots of, lot way more music than pre uh, preaching. Yeah, I, I must say I like this place much more like home, uh, although the weather is totally opposite. <laughs> Yeah, the weather is, it's, it's uh, you know, the, the one thing when you can always say about Orlando's High Holy Day is it's pretty much, well, never great weather for that. So it's, it's windy, it's cold, uh, and it's snowing. Hmm. But no one, that's the reason they break open. There's, there's, they've got casks of wine uh, in the city. They've got the... You know, it, it, there's a reason for all of that. Big fire is being burnt all over the place. Uh, uh, lots of meat, et cetera. And then, of course, um, the Orlanth initiates, you guys don't notice the cold at all. Not in the slightest. You could throw your clothes off um, and run around on the snow and wouldn't feel a thing. As far as you're concerned, it's perfect weather because it's oh, it's really. it's Orleans High Holy Day, and a lot of folk are doing that. Yep. Um, uh, Stormbolt cultists aren't doing that in Kala. It's cold. It's really cold for you because well, you can't wear a whole lot of protective garments, can you? I think are you muted in Kala, or is she on the phone? Sadly, she's on the phone. Uh, uh -huh. And Garen is just cold, and you can't take refuge in intoxication. No. I'll wrap myself up in my cloak and look absolutely indifferent to everything going on around me. I'm definitely not annoyed that I can't join in. Yeah. I mean, you can eat, right? <laughs> you can have steak. Have, have some I can have some steak. I can have some steak, yeah. For those of you all that are initiates, of course, you can see that on this day, uh, this is where the bold home and Orlant's palace, the borders, the boundaries between them blur. And there's bits where you can see spirits and gods. Uh, you, you can feel the presence of, of um, Orlant himself here. It's, it's a high holy day being celebrated by thousands and thousands of your, your cult members. So, so it's... So if one was going to sort of, you know, talk to all that, uh, this would be a good day for it. 
this would be a very good day to cast a divination spell if you want to cast a divination spell. Okay. Um, I, is, it, is it more powerful if I go into the temple or can I do that? Like, you know, um, you're going to get a tent? plus, you're probably going to get like a plus 100% bonus on your chance to cast the spell. So, okay, um, <laughs> that's good to know. That's, I'll yeah. go in the temple then. That's good. Yes. Uh, divination, the way divination works, and that's just worth. Uh, Jeff, you've worth, gone silent. Oh, have I gone silent? No. Can you hear me? Uh, no. Are we hear him. Sorry, just me. It's just yeah. you. Can you hear us, uh, Garen? <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me? I hear you. No? Yeah, we can hear you. Everything's fine. Okay. All right. So the way divination works is for each point that you cast, you may ask a simple question, and you receive an answer of up to 10 words or a brief vision. It takes about an hour per point. For each point that you um, uh, spend in, uh, in the spell, for each po point you mm -hmm. cast, you can ask either an additional question or you can let me have a longer answer. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's not intricate what I want to know, but it's not simple. So I'll probably need two points for that. Okay. So yeah, um, what do I roll again? Sorry. I, I okay, what is your Aaron? Use magic a lot. Hmm? My what Aaron. Is your Aaron? Uh, 72. Okay. Hey, you you have a 172% chance of casting this spell. Okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Frost. That, that, yeah, I did. Did you just get a normal success or did you get something? Uh, it's, an, it's a normal success. Okay. Because I, I might give you more answer, more information if well, you got a special or a critical. Should have told me before I rolled. I might, would have rolled much better. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting how that works. Yeah. Um, all right, what is your question, Colbrast? What do you so ask? My question is uh, to all that. Very humbly, obviously, asking this. Um, during the uh, Lightbringer quest, was, he, was there any moment when he was in doubt that he could actually finish the quest? And either a longer answer would be great, or, or, or the additional sort of aspect of the question would be, um, why? I take another swig of my wine keg, obviously. <laughs> you know, this is this is what Your I own love. Keg. This is yeah. what I love about this setting is I have now been posed with a deep, complicated, um, theological and mystical question, and I have a few seconds to figure out my answer to it. So, uh, are you guys okay? I just want to look up something in one of what? my reference books. Because I was just thinking about this earlier. I will be, give me one, let me see if I can see this here. Um, yes. So kids, the right answer <coughs> for these sorts of questions. The new version of King of Sartar. And I'm going to go right to the Lightbringer's quest. Because I believe there is a section that exactly deals with this. Okay, let me see if I can put this to seven question uh, seven. I could do a little splash and say, on sale now at the Chaosium website, King of, <laughs> King of Thunder. Discount, and you get the PDF. I think you also are allowed to give me a, a vision, obviously, but that might not answer the question. 
I think I think Robin D. Laws refers to it as the, the RPG world's invisible cities, just if anybody wants a little blurb for it there. <laughs> Which one is that? It's called the Italo Calvino's um, classic work where Kubla Khan's talking to Marco Polo and he's giving them all these ah, yep. cities that are basically all Venice, but it's fantastic. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, I mean, it's, I'm gonna... it's two points, so it'd be 20. Um, what is it? Yeah, words. Hey, why don't we be oh, right. today, right? It's his day. I'm fit. And it's his day. It might, he might be slightly long. drunk and wordy, you know. I'm, I'm going to give it to it without bothering to count because you're casting two points. I. Um, my moment of doubt came when I failed the quest. When Ermel betrayed me in the underworld and the laws of hospitality were shattered and my companions abandoned me. I failed and was lost. Does that count as a moment of doubt? And, and the why? Uh, Ermel betrayed me. I was betrayed by my own companion. Uh, and, and, and I was betrayed by my own companion and I broke the laws of hospitality. Mm. Which is very tough given that Orlanth is the god who enforces the laws of hospitality. Mm. But it does make it interesting that if we can talk to Chickmon Bing, who has gone on a Lightbringer's quest before, that, you know, this would be a good way for him to kind of, if you think of a betrayal site, it would be swapping the shield would be a good thing. That, that and also, um, since he broke his own law, does Keller have any of her own laws that she should well, not be breaking? Prince. Yeah, she, uh, the Princess Arthur has all sorts of of laws and rights, uh, like any Orlanthi king, that that ceremonially and rich, ritually binds them in. You know, they have to obey uh, judgments. They have to obey old agreements that were made by their predecessors. They have to behave. Um, you know, they have to behave in honor. They have to give out gifts. Um, um, you know, they, 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 they're, they're priest kings. And so you, you can imagine they are hemmed in with rules and laws. You know, Calder didn't give me a gift. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. what I was going to say. It was nothing. And she just oh, stayed yeah. by the law of hospitality when she tossed us out. Yeah. yeah. I thought she was, she was definitely pushing those laws. And there, were no, there was definitely no gift giving to us despite us presenting her with an enormous amount of awesome stuff. It is becoming obvious that her big flaw is her pride. Mm -hmm. And there has to be, I mean, it should easily be but messed so, with. So one so, question obviously would be when she says, oh, you know, I'm Olaf. Um, we say, so you're, you know, you're, you're like the god of farmers, of the lowly peasants like you know. Um, what, uh, there are several Orlans. She wants the Orlan Rex, right? It's the one that she's really after because it's a ruling. Yeah. yeah. Is there a way to make her at least maybe not get Orlan Rex? Adventurers would be interesting, but she would have to go up. Huh? Doesn't seem for adventurous. No. <sighs> It is I, I, anyways, but the, before you guys go down that path, I want to make sure, Philip, did that answer your question? Um, yes, uh, I think that's just fine. We can, we can work with that, as they say. Now, do you want to know that the rest, a little bit more of it further on, is Ermal then brings them all back together again. That is a known thing. Yes. Mm. No, no, uh, yeah. But I mean, the point is that he actually says that, it, I mean, it's one thing hearing the tale of how he's betrayed and, you know, 
and I don't know, loses faith in, in, in the quest and everything. And it's another thing, him actually saying he was in doubt actually if he could finish the quest because that was the, the point we're going after. And it, uh, it, I, I, and so the question I have for Colbrast is, does, is, does Colbrast find this reassuring um, of uh, hearing his mighty God admit, uh, say that his, that he failed the quest? Uh, or is this something, well, my God, is it the, what a wimpy God? No, no, he, he's, uh, Colbrast is very lenient in these things. He said, you know, I, I make mistakes all the time. <laughs> um, all that is allowed one mistake. So basically, does this increase? Is this something that's inclined to increase your devotion to Orlanther? Not really. I think that he actually, you know, sort of bothered to show up and you know tell me this uh, does actually um, sort of you know change my view of him a bit to the positive. I mean, I, I was, I was, uh, no, that was Argrath. I was slipping. Yeah, fifty nine. But I think, yeah, that's sort of. What is your, you can, you can do an experience check in devotion or land for this. Um, that is 60. Okay. So I'm just going to give it a checkpoint. That's, That's a five. No, you don't roll it now. You do it. Oh, at, sorry. At, when we, when we have the experience checks, you can roll. Yeah. Okay. Because no 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 normally uh, people who lead, actually worship is lead worship. Sorry for interrupting you on that, but that's uh, the 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 that's the information you get from your God. Then um, beyond that, then what I my plan was is to kind of freeform the next two weeks and something. The main questions I had was: you guys decided where you guys were going to stay. Yep. We had a big debate did about. You, it. Did did I have you guys already pay for it or not? We bought, we're, we're camping in land, remember? Oh, you're camping. Yeah, you camping. camping. In our Mora a giant Mora cast thing. <laughs> All right. That's, Full of yeah, revelers that's... at the moment, obviously, which we'll have to kick out to actually be able to you know, sleep there. But... Who's your Does... cook? <laughs> hmm? Hmm? Cook? Who's your cook? traveling and we can cook. That's not a big deal. Or Olga, probably, I would, I would imagine. Oh. You can do everything else. <laughs> oh, well, uh, he, all, maybe he can cook. I think he's kind of in a Shalana Roy hospital or something right now. I believe so. I believe yeah. that was the one thing that Gina uh, that that Gina did there. So what I uh, what I'll do is let's kind of reform well, can, this. Can Zaloon be not quite so magnificent yet? Cook at all? I mean, he might have learned some of them. I would be, arrange, don't, don't worry about cooking. I, I've got to manage how I've got a very good managed household. We can make sure they've got, we can, even if we have to hire some local people here to help cook for us, we can arrange that. That's a that very- Definitely. Hiring some local people would probably be a good way of- Hiring uh, some information and from calling us. Mm. If, they're oh, that's, that, if, if we hire some people in, maybe do any of them know of any other laws or, or uh, duties and obligations of, a, of the king? Uh, of the prince that um, Kalia might have broken, any rumors, anything like that, that we could? We specifically should recruit people with experience of cooking in a royal in the household. I think, yeah. I think the ask is different. I think we, we just take- <laughs> And servers. The Collymore household. Mm -hmm. But we do go to the Collymore tribal house. We, we have an appointment with the, um, the representative of the um, Feathered Horse Queen. Those are- Margeron. Mm -hmm. Those are must. I know that uh, Gina or Margaro, um, Margaro. go and visit with the um, the, the, te the Arnaldo Temple. One of our goals is for her to prove the cycle or tech and take, you know, as a priestess role for that. And we want to get uh, Chipmunk Bing to help us with oh, some okay. shenanigans uh, during the holy rites. Um, I need to... Uh... I want to find out, I'm not, I can't read or write, so I need to hire some blank or my or something to do this. Uh, loss written by Keller while she's been prince. Uh, and also the life of Keller okay. and mistakes of Keller. I want it all. <laughs> it's three volumes. Yes. <laughs> Thousand pages. One, two, three. 
I, I don't have to read them because I don't read, but they can give me like the, the excerpts, the good stuff. <laughs> I love this. Um, okay, throw. Um, I can much? read, by the way, if you need what? it. Is that? I can read. How good of a reader are you? <laughs> hmm? How good are you at reading? Uh, right now, I am at um, 35. Okay. Huh. And Bear. what's your library use skill? Oh, my life is, is, is a whopping double zero. <laughs> I'm just saying, if they bring a book, I could read it, maybe. But I can't find the damn book. You know. All right. So the Bold Home um, Knowledge Temple is uh, one of the two biggest in Sartar. I, I suspect it actually is the biggest in Sartar. Um, but... You know, the, the Johnstown Library has, uh, for whatever reason, thanks to that compendium, it just has international uh, acclaim and reputation. But the Bold Home Knowledge Temple is actually a bigger collection of records because it's the, it's the library and uh, uh, scribe center for, for the House of Sartar and is patronized by them. It's Inkala. Yeah. It's so much bigger than the one in Pavis. So much bigger. If books impressed me, I might be impressed right now. But it's books yeah. don't impress me. It's filled with them. It's got yeah. thousands of books. So thousands. Much paper. And 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 hide. Parchment. Loads of parchment and paper. And it all means absolutely nothing to Incala. I know there's words on them, but someone else can do the reading and give me the excerpt. It's perfect. Yeah, there's, I don't have to do that there's, work. there's dozens of scribes for hire. Yeah, yeah. So just throw me some money. I'm not even going to bother looking. Um, well, maybe I will. Let's let's look. I think I even wrote down somewhere in the price sheet. Yeah. Uh, for how much you talk. Oh, yeah, I did for sages and scribes. Nice. All right. What do we consider this? Um, Common knowledge, no, nope, this no. isn't common. Uncommon knowledge, rare knowledge, or very rare knowledge. We want the very rare knowledge, don't we? We want them to afford really it. seek deep, huh? If we can afford what? it. Yeah, hey, it depends, let's see. I have my money right here, I'm not gonna say upfront. It's front. gonna cost the scribe, uh, cost you, 15 lunars a day for that scribe to be hunting around through the the restricted parts of the, the library of trying to compile things together to, to really do serious scribe work. What? And Kala, how much money would you like? Oh, well, I. How, how much time do we need? Can we hire him for like three days and see what he comes up with and see if it's worth it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So three days first, 45. Okay, um, I'll, I'll give you that right now. Yeah, I don't really know how to do anything but like intimidate people. So I have no way of <laughs> um, bargaining. I, I, I can bargain with him if you like. Although. Yeah, well, hmm. uh, no, I, I do can't. have a, you know, I have a 15% bargain. I'm going to, I'm going to. No, if you roll it, you be, need to fail. Get him. I can problem. be really, really clumsy and try to, like, well, me not right, you do me big favor and so Don't on. Don't try to bond with him, whatever you do, Incala. Hey, Incala, hey, how, um... It didn't work. It didn't work. So it costs you actually a little bit more than 15 a day. You actually agreed I'm, to more money than that. Because you didn't yeah. know 50 times 3 was 45. <laughs> 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 Five, last... eight, 15 a day for three days okay that's 60 gold <laughs> okay <laughs> okay <laughs> of course then later <laughs> this did, and this, and this, did, yeah. and this didn't give 18. me enough money he can't count yeah exactly yeah. it, it, you end up giving uh <laughs> instead of 45 i'll make it a, a, a little bit easier there instead of uh 45 lunars 
you end up agreeing to give him 56 lunars. But yeah, that comes out of my money because Nisk doesn't know how to count. <laughs> Nisk knows how to count. He didn't give me the right amount, though. I have to... 15 lunars, he gave you 40 bucks. <laughs> That's easy. But but that's that's you <laughs> can explain this over Hadia later. I'm sure it'll work great. Well well <laughs> I make the payment and walk out of there a little bit like this doesn't know how to count. You're in a headline. <laughs> yeah, and you always seemed such a smart guy, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> what is in Kala's int anyways? No, I bet it's not, actually really No, it's actually not it's not bad. Um I have a oh no, I'm actually quite intelligent. I have fifteen int. It's just not spent on reading and writing and counting and stuff. You know. I never bothered with that. You know, <laughs> Cobrest or do you had gone here? <laughs> yeah. I would have gone totally different. Oh, sure. No. All right. I, I'm not going to give the information yet because I need to figure it out. Because, uh, but I want to jump to a couple of the meetings that you have sure. um, set up. Uh, let's start with um, Margaret Earthshaker, a young Maringor priestess from Old Tarsh, from um, the Wintertop area, and uh, she wanted. She she and she's got her her um, Grayslander uh, bodyguard, Kenstrel Turtle, and if you recall, they wanted to um, meet with you to, uh, uh, if I recall, they wanted to talk to you about the white bull. Sure, and they did not want to meet at the talk at the temple. Which we correct, know. correct. So. Uh, there is a, uh, the Gracelanders have a, a embassy, you know, basically a villa or a palace that mm -hmm. was built by Sartar for the feathered, for the first feathered horse queen. Um, and they um, are basically, in, uh, you are invited over for a, a banquet a, a, to, to eat with them and to drink with them. Who all is coming along? Nisk, for sure. I'm going as Nisk's bodyguard. And call a troublemaker and coal brast. Uh, excellent. Excellent. Uh, and maybe Gina will show or not. Gina missed not appearing in this episode so far. The, uh, the, the, uh, the food at the, the, uh, that the Grayslanders throw for you all is it is a it's a big feast. They're 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 trying to to show off a um, a bit. It is lots and lots of meat, particularly horse meat. <clears throat> Which is good. Um, I also bring gifts. I bring some armbands. I, get, I bring uh, obviously because it's Marangor, and I bring a battle axe, which is the axe of the weapon of the earth. And ones that we had taken from the um, our 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 friends, the eyeless ones and such. Oh yeah, some of the battle axes that you took is uh, war plunder. Yep, that's the sort of stuff I brought. Okay, they are um, they they accept these um, uh, gifts and. Um, give me a moment here. Give me a moment. I need to. I'll give a suit of bronze armor too, because I you know, our pack animals pack the loot that I'm using for gifting. Although I'm assuming we're hopefully bringing back just as much. Although being slighted by calories is interesting, but I'm not mentioning that yet. That's something to say. Yeah, it's her really unhealthy pride there. It's. Yeah. She can be triggered into really bad actions. Possibly. Generosity is a trait of one act, by the way. Yeah. Okay, I just need to look up something. This is a, a here we 
are awesome. Okay, let me, I'm pretty sure. Give me a quick second. I will give a quick description. Yes, there is. Um, yes, Margaret, um, you know, she is uh, marked with most prominent with the rims of earth, death, and disorder. Uh, she is... She is uh, high charisma, high power, um, uh, priestess of, of Marin Gore. You know, what you would expect, uh, expect from this. She, she is... So, I want to have a, who's the one who's giving this, the gifts? Oh, um, I am, yes. And I'll use the, you know, I'm trying to use, I am not a wind lord, so I don't have this obligation, but I will definitely operate in that fashion of giving to the, of treating a priestess as we were supposed to. With your massive charisma. Oh, that's right. Is it doubled anymore or not? It is still doubled. It is. Oh, my. Well, that's kind of terrifying to have a... Uh, would you roll against your charisma? What do you mean, just base? Yeah. No, double. Zero nine. No. <laughs> well, you are doted upon. <laughs> by uh, this this priestess of the the earth shaker, the dark devouring mother, um, but she's very she's very doting on um, on Nisk. It's it's you know it's uh, Marin Gore is she's uh, Ernalda's twin evil sister. You know where. Arnalda is the mother that gives life. Maringor is the mother that takes life. Um, and, you know, often depicted, you know, there's, I'm sure there's a shrine to Maringor here because this is a grazer uh, center and it probably depicts uh, uh, Maringor dancing on a, on a hill of skulls because that's how Maringor is. She's just that kind of happy goddess. Uh, but she dotes on on Nisk and accepts the gifts, and there'll be a counter gift. But I'll figure that out afterwards. I don't want to. Uh, you guys are loading me with cool concepts here. So, uh, Margaro, uh, you know, did, she makes sure that you all are being provided with food and drink. And basically, this would be if this was Pendragon, this would be where we would have a. Uh, indulgent check, but I'm not going to require you guys to check on this. I'm just going to um, ask how you guys are about this. Um, Margaro herself, you know, she drinks the, the full balls of, of barley beer, um, as do the Graceslanders. And the, the Graceslanders being, you know, from a warrior culture, they they drink, pass it around, drink, pass it around, and they 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 you know they they drink like it's Stalin's party, you know everybody drinking we all fully drink except with one exception. Yeah, what was that? We all drink with one exception. May you smoke, Garen? I never asked. I I eschew all intoxicants. You not don't notice drink, that up to now. <laughs> what you do when you don't drink, don't smoke. What you do, uh, how did you do that? Follow. How, how did you do that in Argraf's tent? I mean, it was dense. With... Well, that's that was the problem. Yes, it was. And that's why the um, assassins yeah. got in there. I had no tolerance. Mm -hmm. but you, you, know, you can't live that down anymore, can you? That's you know, that's your honor here. Didn't we get some interesting well, mushrooms from Chipmunk? We did. Yes, you did. Yeah. Yes, we did. Well, not right now. I don't want to do anything with those right now. Yeah. Um, 
Kenstrel turtle is a, also a humakti, um, but he drinks with the rest of them. He is, he is a follower of the, the um, Grazelander humakt cult, high out, um, high a one hand, uh, who is the great one handed warrior of humakt who didn't need to have a, a left arm. Because because he was just that good. We have sounds, here. sounds <laughs> the left familiar to me. The right I think Kestrel likes Colbrast. Yeah. In fact, the bodyguard he takes a shining to you, uh, um, and and he's uh, and he mocks Garen a little bit, not intensely, but he mocks him a little bit, say uh, say that yes. Who mocked in our lands does not deprive us uh, of drink. And as your friend has said that he, he might deprive uh, many of us of their left arm, but your companion shows that that is unnecessary. I take this in as good a part as I'm able, because I am basically there as an Isra bodyguard, so I just kind of incline my head and say nothing. <laughs> well, Margaro, uh, once everybody is suitably intoxicated. Yeah. I'm, I'm just having an idea here. Um, does, does, what, Kestrel, or what, what was his name? Kenstrel. Kenstrel. Does, does he want to earn some money on the side? <gasps> because I'm looking for a weapons master who uh, trains one armed combat. Oh, great idea. Well, he is a rune lord of the high uh, one arm cult. So of Humacht. Um, Sounds perfect, and, to be honest. Yes. <laughs> and you are a lay member of Humacht, are you not? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, not of Humacht. No, it's normal. Uh, but uh, lay members of many different cults, including <laughs> Isaris, but not Humacht. <laughs> it sounds like in order to pull this off, you will have to become at least a lay member of Humacht. And that means um, that Garen gets to mock you. <laughs> but you can still drink and get drunk. Oh, well, okay. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you still win, basically. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> he said slight, with a slight bitterness to his voice. Yes. I would obviously not want to, you know, deprive Darren of, of the opportunity of mocking me. So, yeah, that sounds like a, like a good plan. You'll drink on that, right? Yeah, we'll drink on that. <laughs> Nesk, are you also a Humak delay member or not? No, my strength of my fertility is way too high. So it's just the only, the only, the Humakti now. So we've got all these overlapping lay membership, don't we? Yep. Let me just look this up. It's actually pretty easy to be, to be a lay member of uh, Humakt. Um, do you have honor? Um, you do? Yeah, sure. I mean, come on. Well, not, have, on my not, not on my character sheet, no. It should be the top left. You don't have it? You don't okay. have it? Uh, on it, uh, there's nothing there. I probably just forgot to sort of fill it in. You can take the honor passion at 60 points, because that's one of the things you have to promise to, to become a lay member. You have to swear to the code of honor. You'll infringe my life. <laughs> 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 But, but you, you know, can get training in your, in your mm, you can get one-handed sword training. Yeah, and, you know, when needs must. Okay. It's, what will it teach taking Wind Whisper honor now? At 60, what? What will it teach Wind Whisper now? Wind Whistler, Wind Whisper. Wind Whistler. On, tr on the trading thing, because if honor comes no, into this. It's probably it, good that he doesn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that, that was just a philosophical discussion of different, you know, views of um, doing deals. Trading and dealing. Yes. Every lay member must take the honor passion. They must swear to uphold the code of Humacht, which is the code of honor. The code of honor Just requires... Uh oh. No more ambushes, right? No, 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 no. It's not quite that. 
It requires oh. that members, one, always fight other members. Do I, you see a big loophole here? Yeah. Must always fight other members fairly. Two, must honor the fallen. And three, um, maintain truth and confidence with each other. Again, no obligation to maintain truth and confidence with mm. non-members of the cult of Hulak. Yeah, that, that sounds, um, sounds okay. Probably good, because you really don't want to start jipping off and cheating, cheating homicidal murderers, maniacs, with guest magic. So I don't think mm. you'll lose much by uh, not trying to... Yeah, yeah. It's actually maybe sort of a bit of a way of, you know, not making that mistake by mistake, to actually combat between members follows rules if you want to fight mm -hmm. another person who is at least a lay member of who of whom act you must swear to continue uh, to um fight only first to fight fairly second mm -hmm. to fight only to the first fallen not to the death and not to the first blood but until one or the other has fallen. Mm -hmm. um, and the loser must surrender a prize to the winner. Okay. So it's the, but the main benefit of being a member of the Cult of Whom Act is they are the best weapons trainers uh, in your culture. Mm. So you may, you may gain training with any form of, so of sword at half price. So, um, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that, <laughs> in case. We shall come back to that. Um, and the particular subcult, High A Strong, uh, Strong Blade, can even teach, oh, it's a shame, uh, just for what it's worth, the spell that he teaches is a rune spell. Well, so you, you would have to become a full initiate, which I don't think you want to. That's a level of commitment higher than it sounds like you wanted to go for. But he teaches the, the spell Strong Blade, which makes a bladed weapon unbreakable, which is really nice for parrying because it has infinite... Um, it's it's uh, the, shield, uh, the Shield of Iran spell. Yes, it's the same thing. Okay. And the other thing that it teaches the, is the, um, the spirit magic spells, the big things that it teaches are the spirit magic spells, blade shark and parry. And the parry spirit magic spell, uh, Philip, is basically just like blade sharp, except it applies to defensive actions. And it's weak, but it's a bit weaker. Yes. Yeah. All right. My, so my main goal is just to get this guy to, to train with me. Um, with my. Thoughts. You're a bit quiet, Philip, for a sec. Okay. Do you hear me now? We hear you yeah. now. The, the main the main goal is to get him to train with me with my sword shield, so I can you know get going on that a bit. Well, we will have time to do that. You'll be able to, 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 to jump straight into that. But instead, I think what we want to do is, is, is jump into the main purpose of the, the banquet, which is uh, Margaro wanting to find out from you all about the plans of Argrath White Bull and um, you all trying to find out anything that it is that you want to know from Margaro about the... Um, the Lightbringer quest, um, how Calor's doing, the Lunars, all those sorts of things. Um, I don't think we're going to talk because I don't know that if Argrath is going to come to Pav to, um, to um, Sarder, but I will say that Argrath's goal is to if I remember, is to drive, is to basically tear, take down the Lunars wherever they are. He's gone great quests. He's allied with dragons to do this. And, um, and does, and, and 
Jeff, you can probably correct me, but does have plans to come to Sardar at some point. Is that true? Well, you guys fought a battle right outside when he tried to march on Bolt Home. March on if Bolt. you remember that. Yeah, to free Bolt Home. Uh, what, what I would, and he has claimed to be a lawful heir to the, um, house of Sartar. Yep. You guys were there when he made that pronouncement. Yep. So what I would love from you is how good is your truth rune, Nisk? Nisk? Yes. Uh, Nisk's truth rune is as good as his other rune that's associated with it, I think. I think it's 50, 50. 50? Well, let me see. Yep, Tooth and Illusion are both the same. Okay. Um, you can have basically two approaches onto how you try to hand... Um, actually, you have three approaches. Mm -hmm. One is if you have the insight skill well enough, you can use that to basically try to... Um, get useful information out of her while blocking probing questions um, that you might not want to answer. I'm pretty good at it. Okay. It's about the well, same as you can yeah. You could try to use either your truth rune to basically say only what is true, but fulfill, you know, be as narrow as possible about what you say. Or lie with my illusion rule. Or lie with your illusion rule. However, all of these social skills, because you guys are a bit drunk, are going to be at a penalty. Okay. So you tell me the approach you want to get. I think he's going to use insight. He's not, he's not trying to hide a lot, per se. I don't think there's much to hide. But he's also not going to be, uh, you know, he's with all these humakti. He's not going to start lying all the time. It doesn't make sense. He knows that Marin Gore does not have the um, the truth rune, but I know she gets pissed if she gets insulted, and I don't want to do that. Um, he's obviously aware of the hospitality. Does that make sense? Works for me. Okay. Hey, roll. That is a failure, not a fumble or anything, but a failure. You and her, she, both drunkenly tell each other um, the broader view of what your bosses are up to. Um, she makes it clear that um, uh, she thinks with the, the new feather, there's a new feathered horse queen. And this new feathered horse queen um, is ambitious. Uh, uh, ambitious and uh, determined uh, to assert her rights and authority throughout Dragon Pass. Uh, the previous, the, the, uh, the, the previous uh, um, uh, Feathered Horse Queen betrayed everyone to help raise the dragon. May have freed it may have broken the lunars, but at, uh, but she awoke she helped awaken the dragon, which everybody agrees was a bad thing. And the feathered chorus queen before her was little better than a uh, a lunar puppet. This new feathered horse queen, um, I believe her name that she is called she is uh, the feathered horse queen always takes a a regnal name. Mm -hmm. when she becomes queen and so they don't refer to her by her birth name uh, after that. Her regnal name is, a regnal name is Reaches Furthest, which Margaro thinks is a, um, uh, gives an idea of her ambitions. I don't think there's any question. Um, I will say, and I believe, because this is true, is Argrath, in many ways, is a, tr is a traditionalist, but willing to take on, learn new things and adapt to new magics, as he always does. And that is certainly what um, Argrath She does. wants to know if Argrath is going to be, if your white bull is going to be content sitting in his desert city, surrounded by uh, animal barbarians. Um, uh, I don't think you need me to answer that question, do you? 
She wants to hear, uh, so wants to know what she, that, that, that's his reply to that is I don't think you need me to answer that question to you. Because he doesn't think she, he, she does. I mean, I think it should be pretty, to him, it should be pretty clear. Um, our graph cannot deal with the lunars as he needs to where he is. He, they, he has gathered his allies and they have already um, sent the lunars packing from Prax, their tails, but their tail between their legs. Um, I, slightly intoxicated, and what, what what was so wrong with the dragon rice? And what why was the feathered horse queen there? That was Argrath, wasn't it? I'm a little bit drunk. Okay, she claims. Is it an interesting how everybody seems to say that they were involved one way yeah. or another in the uh, the dragon rice? She claims. And let me just look this up here. We should, we should stop claiming that too, because it's almost true. You think of I fought, we won that great battle, and in many ways that is could be it, where everybody takes part and drives it, but and then we all win. Or the dragon just made everyone think that they were helping raise it, and She's, it just waited its time. I don't our graph at all. Mm -hmm. She says the previous for, uh, feathered horse queen was with bitter heart. Um. For she sent her own son to avenge the tribe upon a vile foe. She helped him become warped in shadow and deserted him when his task was done. She encouraged war bands and was the first to send um, the Vendrick clans away in migration. She fought against her own uh, sister, but was betrayed by the worm within herself. Um, and when the dragon, uh, when, when the, the dance of the dragon began, uh, she was slain when it ate itself out of her womb. Uh, she was alone without prayer or weeping of the people, yet the goddess came for her. That's what they say about, she says about the previous feathered horse queen. She, she says the dragon rise was, um, uh, that was her man. Uh, it was done by her rites in her ritual, but at a terrible cost. But she's uh, she's a Marin Corps priestess, so terrible costs. That's their yeah, they're fine with that. That's par for the course, right? Par for the course. You don't worship the goddess of earthquakes and not expect a little bit of collateral damage. So I will ask her how does the um. I said in traditional the great in tradition the great kings of um of Sardar <clears throat> to gain that kingship married the feathered horse queen. It's true, right? Yes. She says she says that one of the uh, furthest, wouldn't she find it interesting that if there is that the current person who some call prince is um is there. Who is seems to be the smart this um He's, whose lover is that of a of a star? She um, uh, she says that uh, that that three feathered horse queens uh, before have uh, performed the marriage contest and each received great great riches and great power from having done so. Uh, and uh, uh, reaches all is, or reaches farthest is ambitious. Says, at, she says, and there are many who might uh, try to claim, uh, claim it, but it would seem uh, that uh, Starbrow would be beginning at uh, something of a disadvantage in the con uh, in such a contest. For it was Orlanth that married Ernalda, if I uh, remember the stories, not his daughter. Yes. Now, as an aside, she's not saying it's not possible right. for for her, but it would seem to, that that would be something of a a a handicap. 
but it's obviously not impossible for this she and Lorantha. Exactly. Well, it's not impossible because the gods are gods. Yep. Um, but the um, <clears throat> is there any other info that you guys are trying to gather out here? Um, I'm, yeah, I guess the questions are, you know, it, it's a, she's doing a light bring. Have they heard anything? Because she's going to be doing the light bringers quest. And it's the first time doing that since the lunar occupation. Um, there must be concerns and divinations about that happening. And she says that, yes, um, uh, she, she expects that um, all will be gathered at the hill of Orlanth Victorious to begin it. That is where we will give gifts. We have, um, there are gifts from Wintertop um, that, that we are offering as well. She, <clears throat> she says she is not entirely sure why she is performing, uh, she, she is um, choosing this as the time to perform such rites. If she was the ruler of Sartar, smashes her hand on the, uh, uh, on the table, clank, she says she would not be uh, uh, wasting time so much time and resources in, in, in performing um, such a hasty ritual. She would march on Tarsh. Uh, and march on Tarsh before Tarsh marches on her. That's what she thinks. She thinks that, that uh, now is the time to strike. Now the old Tarshites, a lot of that is that is that free or is that under lunar occupation still? It is autonomous. Okay. She will say that the empire has always feared the Shaker Temple ever since we um, uh, was, uh, we destroyed a lunar army uh, that that tried to take our freedom. Because she's from that temple, the, the main temple of... She's from the main temple. Earthquakes. Giant and drunken I she will say that earthquakes, that is, that's what your battle plan should really be about. Earthquakes and dinosaurs. With enough earthquakes and enough dinosaurs, no one can stand against you. I don't know if I disagree with that. True enough, yes. What was that, Philip? True enough, yes. The dinosaurs are horrible. I mean, she, she, she. Uh, do you say dinosaurs are horrible? Yeah, fearful. You should say fearful. Yeah, very terrifying. Terrifying. Even even, even wolf pirates are scared of dinosaurs. You it's know, the only riding beast that actually impressed me, beside the practicing ones. So. Riding I believe <laughs> this is the point that she and some of the other old Tarshites, they demand the musicians perform the Brontosaurus uh, dance, where uh, they get out and there's a bunch of drums and, 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 and hordes, and the uh, priestess and her followers, they perform some sort of strange lumbering dance that sounds uh, probably surprisingly like a a heavy percussion version of, what is it, Henry Mancini's uh, The Elephant <laughs> Dance? <laughs> I, I take out, I bring out my drum and I try to join them. Okay, well, I'll let you play your instrument. But I think this is, this is probably hit your diplomatic, uh, this is the point where the- diplomatic limit in that. We certainly haven't insulted anyone. Uh, uh, after the, how did you, your, your drum playing go? I, succeed, I succeeded barely. So you can write that you you drummed the Brontosaurus dance. <laughs> that is so cool. Gina <laughs> exactly. probably dances. Oh, I'm sure everybody can do their. They, 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 this is the point where there's been enough barley uh, barley beer passed around and and food that that loads of folk because. Uh, this apparently is a favorite of the Shakers, the Brontosaurus dance, as they dance around 
uh, uh, in some sort of happy, drunken, smash and kick things around dance. Who all participates in that? And call us drumming to it. Sure. Misk, yeah, sure. You roll, sure. Well, my dance Misk and Colbrest roll against your dances. Gary, you are just, your character is looking exactly like you are right now. <laughs> just watching. Keep an eye on everything. Making sure everything's um, safe and, and, and everybody, all my, all those under my protection are, are properly watched. I'm probably also having a little conversation when I can with any of the other bodyguards around. See if well, I can pick up any gossip. Your dances. Most of the bodyguards are uh, Humakti. Yeah. The Humakti cult is very important amongst the Graceslanders. Your dance is so nisk, you get to do the lumbering Brontosaurus dance with the priestesses. It's very I'm fun. Brontosaurus. Uh, <laughs> or the dinosaur dance. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's the dinosaur. I'm going to do the Brontosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> the big hair. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm doing the Stegosaurus by mistake, I think. <laughs> Did you fail? Yeah. Colbrast, at some point, inexplicably, even though everybody tells you that brontosauruses do not spin around, you decide this is the point to do some sort of whirling dervish kind of dance yeah. and then follow I her. Have, I could have augmented probably with my movement room, but I was too drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and after this, I don't know what goes on for the rest of the feast, but it is a happy drunken feast. And we move forward uh, a few days mm -hmm. to the next vignette is training at the Humacht Temple, where Kobrost is, you are, you are training, uh, Kenstroy is, is willing to train you. Garen, are you going to spend much time at the Humacht Temple? It's a big oh. fine, this is the biggest in Sartar. Definitely. And the most prestigious, the leader, um, he may not be the leader of the temple who runs the temple and whatnot, but what the, the Humakti there that everyone agrees is the leader. You know, it's, maybe, it's not what they call him, but that's certainly the impression. You know, it's, it's you know, he, this guy comes by and everybody just gets quiet. Mm -hmm. um, and the Humakti get as close to being fanboy as it can. It is, it is the the legendary rune lord Sarah Stip One Eye or Sarah Stip Cold Eye, better known nowadays as Sarah Stip Prince Slayer. He is the Humakti who killed Temertain. Because yeah. the previous prince of Sartar, this is the previous prior to Kalar, there was the lunar prince of Sartar, and Sarastip killed him, went into his palace with a bunch of Humakti, I believe including one of the one of your followers. One of our character followers is there. Uh, and Sarastip- Head taker. She yes. As well, and, she, she and she's silent and, and reverential towards uh, Sarastip. Sarastip is a living legend in the Humakti cult. He should have been king of the Milani, but he didn't. But he refused kingship in order to serve Humakt. So he, God. and he, it's he wears a patch over one eye, which um, he is said to have torn out and offered the gods of death in the underworld. Oh, offered them his die. What a offer. And. It, People say that if he lifts up his patch, it, um, if you look at his eye, you'll die. Well, I'm going to need to get me one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so well, we'll, we'll be in the underworld pretty soon. Yeah. But this guy, <laughs> this guy is an expert on the underworld. He has been on multiple hero quests. Uh, 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 into the underworld and and whatnot, and was part of the original Sartar High Council in 1613, along with Chipmunk Bing and Keller Starbrow. And he's in your temple. And we have it in because Nostarios can go and introduce you. So, Garen. 
What do you guys think? Is this something you're going to prep Garen with some questions and, and ideas while I get a glass of water and maybe a cup of wine? Can we just pause for a moment and yes. then start that? Pause the recording. Back. Okay, so Garen, have you been prepped by your associates now that you have an in with um, uh, the mighty Sarah Stip Cold Eye? Well, we've discussed it somewhat, and mainly the reveals needs to be be careful. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know what his relationship is like with color. So, right, and then also you've got to the other piece you've got to do is. Don't ask him, you know, don't any, obviously, and you won't do this, although I may do this, don't do anything to bespeech his honor, right, of where he is in that. But he could certainly give you an idea of the underworld and talk to him about that and hero quest and things like this. Has he, do we know if he's tried this particular hero quest? He won't have done, will he? Well, no one, not on this scale. Certainly not no. on this scale. He might have done a version of it. Well, there's elements, possibly, it's possible. Mm. Right, okay. So, so, okay, off you go, he's sort of, you know, pushing, like, nudging I towards. You go, you go. <laughs> <laughs> or you're with your own people. There we are. Hey, just show your big you're right, right, you right behind you, Garen. <laughs> okay, this is what everybody knows about him. In just in case that it's uh, useful. Sarastip Koldai, born in 1572. Sarastip Koldai is a sort of Humak and part of the ruling dynasty of the Milani tribe. Sarastip abdicated all clan and tribal offices and severed himself from his kin so that he might carry out a terrible deed without his kin suffering the consequences. In 1624, on Humak's High Holy Day, Sarastip led a band of Humakti from the Milani and other tribes and killed the lunar puppet ruler, the lunar puppet ruler of Sartar, Tamertain the Philosopher. Sarastip led his killers along a secret path in the hero plane to gain entry directly into the prince's stronghold. After killing Tamertain, Sarastip's Humakti cut their way through the lunar priests. Talmori warriors and Sardarite bodyguards of Temertain, killing any that would defend the prince. Sarastip was a member of the Sardar High Council in both 1613 and in 1625, uh, and now serves on the city ring of Johnstown. He is widely seen as the leader of the Humart cult in Sartar. He is often away um, from Johnstown and speaks for the, but still speaks for the Milani tribe at Johnstown. He is a renowned weapon master and is quested deep into the underworld on behalf of his god. On one such uh, quest, he gained his ability to kill with his left eye at the cost of sight in that eye. He is known to have pledged loyalty to Prince Keller Starbrow and has a well-known rivalry with the Terrelin clan of the Kolimar. So, with that, led. But he is the the senior rune lord uh, here at the temple. You are an initiate in very good standing uh, with Humak Garen. You could easily meet with him. Oh, and you, you have could, you could even took part in the in that event with you, who show who can introduce you while she's there, and she's also an initiate. So yes, Arius will get you in. No problem. You could even spar with him. That'd be pretty cool. In fact, that's how this conversation is going to take place. It's going to yeah. take place as <laughs> you spar. All right. So, what do you, um, you, you get to spar with, um, with Sarah Stip Cold Eye? Tell me. Are you just going to spar or are you going to actually say anything to him? I'm going to... Uh, what is it... What is it like to plunge yourself into the underworld in service of the god? Of our god? Okay. For each one of these, um, each time you ask a question, I'm going to ask you to roll against your sword skill. 
So basically, as long as you're doing a decent job of, of, being, of, of using your sword, you'll be able to keep asking and don't humiliate, your, you humiliate yourself in the sparring. He's happy to continue conversing with you. Can I augment? You with... can, but how good is your sword? Uh, 100%. Okay, you're going to want to augment because you're going to get a big minus. Okie dokie. Because he's but his base is going to be quite a bit higher than a hundred. Oof! Just seventy nine against eighty five. All right. So you. That's your augment, uh, right? Yeah, that's my augment. Yeah. You have a seventy percent effective sword skill. Okay. Let's roll. First one. Fine. Sixty two. Sixty two. Um. You can ask your question. What's your question again? What is keep it? In what mind, is it? Keep in mind, you've got a 70% chance at some point you're not going to be able to ask him questions anymore. So you, you may want to be, you, you need to decide do you want to be subtle and indirect or not? Okay. It's your call. I'm just, I'm just letting you know mechanically if you've got a 70 and he's got a 100. What do you what do you think Calais' chances are of of venturing into the underworld successfully? You've been there yourself. Do you think she has the the the, the abilities? Do you think she will be uh, able to fulfil her quest? She'll be able to enter the underworld. All eventually, one way or another, enter the underworld. <laughs> do you think she will come back? He, he, he says that is an entirely different question. Um, that Another is an exchange. A, what? Another sword exchange. However, he gets a, because I rolled a very good su uh, success, he gets a question to you. And his question to you is, um, uh, what is your interest in this? Garen of Pavis. I am a loyal and devoted servant of the White Bull, and he has an interest in all those who would attempt to style themselves King of Sartre. Okay. You can ask another question if you succeed. And I do, 41. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your good question? What? While he's imagine what he's thinking of the question here, I want you guys to imagine what this has got to be like. This is like one of these, you know, in classic. the movies. Yes, a classic in the movies, sparring here. And here's the other bit. Cole Brest, you get to watch this. Yep. Garen is a good swordsman, right? Yep. He is. Kenstrow is a good swordsman, I just noticed. <laughs> yeah, Kenstrow is a good swordsman. He is painfully outclassed by Sarasip. Okay. So he's just Sar playing with him. Sarasip isn't he's... even bothering. He's not yeah. bothering to do stuff like okay. augment. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just, you know, keep that somewhere in the back of my head for future reference. <laughs> Be careful, one <laughs> <laughs> Um I'm not sure. I doubt he's using his iron sword. Um, oh, no, I, do, I think he's just using a wooden stick with a little handle. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's, what is it, Mr. He's probably, he's probably using a reed. Oh, yes, it's classic, probably a reed. Classic. Because it stings when he hits. Mm. <laughs> What would you guys I'm, ask? I'm, I'm fascinated by this. I've never seen anything like it. I'm thinking of asking something about um, how she'll fare against uh, death or like some maybe going as, as kind of straight in as what do you think will be her greatest challenge? Do you think that seems reasonable or is that pushing it too far? That's reasonable. Okay. Then everyone, I'll, I'll, everyone will want to know that. Obviously, what, I mean, what will what will 
present Kalo with her greatest challenge in the quest. I, excellent. Now I have the idea that Sarah Stipp, uh Cold Eye is, he, he's Mr. Miyagi with, with a patch, with an eye patch. <laughs> Demanding that you 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 uh, you soap up and clean that Cadillac. <laughs> uh, okay. What was that? The guy from Remo Williams. <laughs> <laughs> so Darren, uh, his answer to that is is that um, she will face um, uh, many challenges in the quest. Uh, she will have to to um, prove. She will have to to um, prove her worthiness uh, to pass uh, through the gates of Boldholm, and will be confronted by um, be, be confronted by the the deities of death and the underworld. True enough, but we have met with Kalia, and. She seems, she possesses great pride. Do you think that will uh, inconvenience her? Caller's pride, uh, <clears throat> Caller's pride and uh, her ambition has always been greater than her honor. This, this chimes with, with my experience with her. Now he wants a follow up here. He says, um, uh, which is, um, you continue to ask these questions, Garen, follower of the white ball. What is your interest in this? Is your interest um, that of of Argrass, or do you have an independent one? And he hits you with a reed. I come to serve, to, to do my duty to my Thane, Nisk, and to my king. But I, I confess I look forward to standing in the stead of my god in the realm of death when Kalir enters. Okay, roll your dice. Ooh. I have failed, 89. He, uh, he, 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 uh, after you say that, he manages to swoop down uh, with the reed, trip you so that you fall with the, with, with the reed and smacks you on the back of your head. And he says, uh, you wish to stand in the, uh, in the place of your God. All you need to know is honor, truth, and loyalty. No, I, in, he says, that is all you need uh, and smacks you on this. I thank you for the lesson, Sarah Stipp. And bow my head and leave the uh, leave the sparring space. Uh, not not shamefacedly, but you know, kind of mulling over what I've been told. So that is the ability to ask him questions in the sparring. Uh, you could try to uh, uh, have him teach you, and maybe that would get you um, and, and, and basically try to be taught by him and see if that definitely, gives you. Definitely gonna try and get some training from him. All right, what is the reason why he should train you? That would be his, that will be his, his question to you. Why should he? I am a honorable and, and noble Kumakti, and I wish to dedicate myself further to the service of the sword and to the god. And there are, okay. there are, none, there are none few or any with, the, with your skill, and it would be foolish of me not to, to ask to learn at your feet. Sounds like he, 
honor has been the main thing pulled up. What do you what do you guys think? So, Garen, I want you to make an honor roll against your honor. Don't screw it up. Uh, that is a what's the term? It's not a critical. Special. One. Special. It's a special. Okay. It's good enough. He's willing to train you. He's willing to train you based on the grounds of 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 um, honor alone. And the first thing he tells you to do, um, very Mr. Miyagi style here, is he wants you to. Um, he he insists you do things like put your um, uh, weapons away, and he wants you to stand you know, stand in the sparring ground, or actually with your weapon. I, more likely he has you <laughs> there with your weapon, having you hold it out directly in front of you. Stand <laughs> there, don't say anything, and don't move. I'm not, yeah, absolutely fine. I'm not going to be, I'm not Daniel LaRusso. I'm just going to shut up and get on with it. I'm not asking <laughs> any questions. Fine. And uh, a lot of his training basically is about uh, self -mort uh, mortification. It's he, it's it's all about uh, any time that you try to 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 move it towards something. He wants to make sure you can do the most important things, which is uh, have your your will be greater than uh, your body. That your honor is is mightier than this pathetic um, uh, physical shell of yours, and that what, what he tries to get through and make a cult lore. See if any of this get uh, hammers through to you. Okay. Uh, yep, yeah, that is a zero three against. Wow! So your cult lore gets to go up here, but but. He hammers through is that uh, uh, Humacht is death. He is severance. He is, um, he, yes, yes, this is, this is, Humacht is death. He is severance. He is the god of ends. He is, he is more than some, than a mere, um, uh, war god, more than a mere fighting god. Uh, Humacht, Humacht has no, um, Humacht himself has no ambition other than to be that weapon. Uh, and what matters is that that weapon, it doesn't matter who uses death, death is coming for, for everyone. What matters is, is death is done with honor. And as long as honor, uh, death is, is, is wielded with honor, it doesn't matter what it's wielded to do. And does Gary get this point? Does he agree with this? Certainly does. So... I'm going to get out of this. You'll get a, he's going to train you in your sword, but you're also going to get an experience check on cult lore, honor, and um, uh, the death room. But I'm also going to let you get a chance. You will get a chance to have at least a, a short, friendly conversation with Sarah Stipp. And this may be, you may want to talk with everybody else because this is the last thing we'll do tonight here is if you want to pump him for any information, I'm going to give you one chance. Guys, what do we want, what do we want need to know? Well, he's, do you know if he's done the Lightbringers quest or something like that? I mean, I don't know if he has, I don't think he has. But I, I think it's more a matter of, um, oh, how to put it? Um, you know, you've got to think of how you would play your role because your role needs to be, when we go down there and do this, your role is doing it, to, is not doing it for our graph. 
your role is doing this for the honor of, um, for honor's sake, for honor, to prove that Keller has that, right? Okay. I mean, our goal here is to prove she is worthy. It's not to stop her, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, in terms of what to ask him about that, um, I mean, you have not tread, you have, you have not done a hero quest and treaded into the underworld. Is that true? Yep. Have a... Is there something that you could say from someone who has traveled that has sacrificed to do it um, to, you know, is, is there, is there someone who can, um, how to put it, um, is there someone who can, you know, is there something you can get? I don't know. That's what I think of as opposed to asking your direct, him directly about calories. But basically, you could ask him about, you know, his guidance on how to do hero quests as a Humaki. That, you know, that's something very general, but it, I, don't, I don't think it goes against what his honor is, stuff like that. Uh, okay, that's my some, theory yeah. I'd have to ask. Oh, or if there's anything you should be, should be watching out for. Like how, you know, or, or at what, what point do you rip out your eye and give it to someone? I mean, it's pretty clear what the tests for Humak seem to be. They seem to be a lot more direct than for other religions, and you know. How can, I, yeah, so what if I go with something like, how can I best serve the God? How can I best serve Humak? during a hero quest. But, but it's not your hero quest. I mean, we're gate crashing someone else's hero quest. No, but I mean, oh. even, yeah, but in any, in any case, I am standing in. But don't you know that? All you need to know is honor, truth, and loyalty. Yeah. You need to ask, you know, is what you're, you know, how do you do it with honor? Are you doing it with yeah. the How do I yeah? How do I and how do I properly embody these qualities? That's probably that, that's that's fair, I think. Yeah. yeah, so we'll go we'll go with that question. How do I properly embody honor, truth, loyalty? He well why you asked that he he manages to whack you on the head with his little reed uh, 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 for each one of these um, while you're sparring. Do you see? I assume you're using a weapon. Uh, I, I assume it would be a practice sword. Okay. It's so, still. Yeah, I mean, it's still. It's still completely humiliating. I don't even think it's a reed, uh, <laughs> Philip. I think it's a fly swatter. It's one of those little. The, you know those African fly swatters that have the the the, the handle, the handle and such, and he's yeah. hitting you with a fly swatter because he's that good, Garrett. Yeah. He's or smacking. What else here? That would happen. To you. <laughs> Not to you. But that's part of or the a, or, or, or a back scratch. I mean, <laughs> but <laughs> but with the little honor hand on top. Honor, Garrett. Uh, must be with every breath. And even when you have no breath left, honor is um, honor is uh, the uh, that is what a humakti is made of. You do not ask how I can be honorable. You know how to be honorable. You are on. Uh, you, you are honor, or you are not humakti. Is his very nuanced view of this? <coughs> I think he's just saying you'll be fine. <laughs> loyalty, and then loyal. When, when it comes to loyalty, he manages to get you to to trip up and fall. He says, "Loyalty. Who are you loyal?" Who do you serve and serve who you are loyal to? What did I say the third one was? Truth. 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 Um, I, that, that, uh, truth and death 
are inextricably linked. If you avoid truth, you are trying to avoid, um, you are running from death and only, uh, only cowards uh, run, uh, run and fear the truth, uh, fear, uh, run from truth and seek to, seek to twist it. Twisted truth is as useless as a twisted sword. I thank you for the lesson, Sarah Stipp. Yep. Sarah Stipp has, uh, and, and he says, it matters not what your loyalties to, so long as you are loyal. It matters not what you do, so long as it is done with honor. It matters, it does not matter so much as what you say as long as it is said with truth, which you say and do as long. As, and so basically very much a, a bit of, it really doesn't matter, you know, that all this political bullshit, all this, uh, you know, oh, am I on the right side of this or, or whatnot? He, he really hit, tries to hammer home to you with his two weeks. So that is totally irrelevant for a humanity. You know, your, your function is to kill things with, uh, and to kill things while being constantly honorable, truthful, and to loyal to what, loyal to whatever it is that you've given your loyalty to. Of course, well, then you have to decide what you are loyal to. Niskanagrath, I'm Humans. I have already chosen on that front. So, um, yes, I think that's pretty much well a pretty succinct uh, uh, summary of the Humakti worldview from somebody who 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 does a pretty good job of embodying that. With that, guys, um, it's it's time. Where I would like everybody to do before between now and the next session is to make your experience rolls, and I'm going to let everybody make a power gain roll. We might still do, um, I, I, I don't think we have time for another vignette here, um, but uh, I'm happy to do one offline about the, the Orlanth Temple. Okay. And then we still got Chipmunk Bing. And Chipmunk Bing. Yep. And then next session will be Chipmunk Bing and then the Hero Quest. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're okay. on the cool breast. Yep. You and Chipmunk Bing. So I, I hope I'm fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. I know this was a short session, everybody, but um, I hope it was amusing and I had a good time. But with this, I think it is um, it is a school night here in Berlin, and that means it's an early morning tomorrow. So with that, uh, I say goodbye to everybody until next week. Thank you all for watching. Thank you. <laughs>